and welcome back to Let's Play E7. Last time, we got a serious plot bomb. Sius and Tia were behind everything. The assassination of the king, and based on what they said, they are deeply entwined with the calamity facing Altago right now, and they certainly plan to see it through to the absolute destruction of the entire country. But, of course, they're starting with Altago City, because, you know, relevance. Anyway, heading out here, our goal is to get to Ruins Island, and to that end, we have a boat waiting for us at the docks, but there's a couple things we can do before we leave for Ruins Island. First off, over here, it's Ursa, you know, after the uh, whole torture thing. Yeah, you, you bet you feel bad now for all the whipping and stuff. Now, <laughs> she just kind of brushes that under the table. I guess she's a bit more friendly uh, off the clock. Eh, I guess that's fair enough. Now, after the Calamity strikes Altago, and after the scene with Sius and Tia Luna, this guy right here, Wesley Irizari, talking to him gets us something. Hmm. Yeah, that's a real dilemma. Oh, what do you need? Okay, sounds like a good idea to me. Anything we can do to help the city is probably worthwhile. And for taking this, he gives us the Ivory Ember Case, which we can use to get some of Seagram's Sacred Flame. And we get the final side quest of the game, the Holy Flame of Seagram. And this is a very straightforward quest, but yes, our quest list is completely filled out. We've only got four more to complete. So, to complete this quest, we just need to hit, head to Seagram, and this is strictly a fetch quest. We just go to Seagram Village, and now that we have the Ember Case, you may, have rem you may remember from when we first visited Seagram, there was a point towards the top we could go to that had a, uh, a brazier on it. And now that we have the Ivory Ember Case, we can go up to that brazier and uh, collect a sample of the flame, and because of its holy properties, ideally we can use it to ward off some of the worst effects of the Miasma within Altago City. And it's that simple. And this quest is just a straightforward fetch quest. We just get this Ivory Ember after obtaining the case, go back and give it to the guy, and uh, a cutscene plays out, and after that, quest's done. But that is not all we need to do in Seagram. Now that we've got uh, a decently put together party here, and I'm going to put the, let me see, the Power Wrist 3 onto Aisha. And let me just put something on to Krushi. Uh, doesn't really matter too, too much what I give her. I guess we can just... Eh, it's been a while since we use Let's just give her these peculiar ear earrings. Probably gonna set everybody up with training rings later. But it is long since uh, been time that we saw Miliurdu. Now we can actually defeat him. Uh, it is honestly a little adv advisable that you do this after you go to the Sea Sanctum, because with the levels you get there, you'll be able to beat him the most painlessly, but we can defeat him well enough right now. Uh, the strategy I'm going to employ is very straightforward and is in fact the same as uh, yeah, what was the worm boss. Well, the giant worm boss. Uh, we're just going to utilize the same exact tactic I did there, which is stand back with Aisha and hit this guy, which is a good idea because this guy hits very, very hard. Uh, he can easily shred your health bar if you get hit by things. Fortunately, he has a very straightforward attack pattern that is just super easy to uh, completely ignore. Uh, he charges at you and he spins, and that is it. Standing back with Aisha and pelting him with Aqua Burst, we can just avoid damage entirely, no problem. As you can see, uh, the hitbox on that uh, spin is not particularly generous for him, so uh, he needs to be really close for it to be a threat to us. And the charge, of course, just hang back, that can't hit you at all. There is a sort of dead zone towards the entrance of this area where if you lure him there, uh, he will come up to you, Aisha can shoot him very easily, but he can't actually do anything to you while you stand there. Oh, whoops, I got a little careless going for the explanation. Uh, I, I do need to be careful because I didn't feel it was worth it to go back and get any more healing items, so uh, if I die, I have to do this all over again. But yeah, I didn't really feel it was, uh, I don't really feel it's uh, that particularly interesting uh, for an already repetitive boss fight for me to just stand in one place and pelt him. Uh, the other thing to know about him is that he has a weak spot in his tail, but it is 
very, very difficult to hit because he's constantly moving, and the character's auto-targeting, uh, they're positioning- oh, whoops. Uh, well, there's that screw-up that I was talking about. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna cut ahead to when this thing is dead, so, uh, I'll meet you once, uh, we're close to finishing it off. Alright, there we go. Finally defeated it. Takes a while to kill it. It's not a difficult fight by any stretch of the imagination, though. Uh, essentially, you start to zone out and get careless, and then you take a nasty hit. Man, the thing is hitting Aisha for, like, what, 800 HP of damage? Yeah. Definitely safer to take it on after you finish Ruins Island or the Sea Sanctum. But, eh, let's just get out of the way now. For defeating him, you remember last time we got an extra skill upgrade. That one was for Dogi, this one is for Geist. Again, since Geist is not tied to any particular sanctum, he just gets his upgrade from a bonus boss. Hooray, he gets another upgrade to his fairly useless extra skill. I want to like the Fairy Strike skill, but it is just so hard to deal good damage with it without getting killed in return. <laughs> Gift Longma. Go ahead, guys. We could use all the assistance we get. Although, honestly, guys is probably not going to see any floor time uh, after this. Save for one instance. Uh, the party we're going to be using for the rest of the game, except maybe for one boss fight, we're just going to be sticking to Aisha and Krushi mostly, since I feel like every character has gotten an adequate amount of floor time at this point. However, Elk will definitely be coming out once I do uh, the end game grinding, just because he's very good for that. But with the Miliordu taken care of, we can now provide the Sacred Flame. And of course we'll help him. And it's just a cutscene, they alight all the torches. Hopefully this will prevent some of the worst effects of the miasma, keep any fr anyone from the other villages spontaneously busting out in um, Iskin fever. I hate how my train of thought just dies on me mid-sentence. Uh, oh, uh, well, it's, it's very easy when you can teleport. What is our reward for doing this? A Flash Ring 3. Very useless, but hey, money. Yeah, we'll do our best. Now, before we head down to the docks, just a couple more things we want to do. First off, we can finally return to the Zanzibar firm and actually purchase things there. It's been blocked off to us for quite some time. I did miss a cutscene during the disaster or the start of the disaster in Altago. If you come here with Adol and Dogi, you can check out the Zanzibar firm and they'll uh, bust down the door and scare the ever-loving crap out of Zanzibar. Kind of uh, disappointed that I forgot to do that, but it's not a huge deal. It's not mandatory by any stretch of the imagination. And very amusingly, you can start purchasing stuff from the Zanzibar firm right away afterwards. Uh, we are actually going to invest in a Battle Bandana right now. Battle Bandana, very good accessory. When you hit enemies, uh, it with a charge attack, it doubles the amount of SP you get from hitting them, so it allows you to max out your SP gauge very quickly. Uh, it's one of my preferred endgame accessories, uh, very good on characters like Aisha and Adol who attack fast, arguably even better than the Crimson Gen. Uh, otherwise, let's see, no, not here. We want to go to the weapon store. Gonna have to sell a few things, but we do want to make some equipment purchases. Only for Krushi, though. <laughs> hey, money is money. Yeah. So, we only want to buy weapons for Krushi. The reason for that is because we are going to find going to be finding better gear than anything we can buy here for Aisha and Adol in the upcoming dungeon. I believe we're also going to find some stuff for uh, Dogi and Geis, although I, I, I definitely Geis, I'm not, I don't quote me on Dogi. Uh, what we want to do, though, is sell the armor that we're not using. And yes, that is a actual legitimate difference between Aisha and Sigrun, is that Sigrun equips the slightly superior light armor in contrast to uh, Aisha's cloth armor. So that's kind of an interesting detail. Let's sell off the accessories we're not going to use. Flash Ring 3 sells for a very cool 25000 Get rid of this Vitality Belt. And we are going to buy a new weapon for Krushi, just to get her damage up a little bit, and in case I decide to hit anything with her, we'll put that on her. We'll also buy, let's see, a... no, not a Dragoon Mail. Oh, just barely don't have enough money to buy a Reflex, so let's see if there's just one more thing that I can sell, maybe. Ba -ba -ba -ba. 
Uh, decisions, decisions. Uh, I'm always so bad about finding things to sell. Ah, uh, you know what? I I'm just gonna sell some of these ailment inflicting accessories. I kinda hate to sell off unique items like that, but I'm never gonna use them, so what, what does it even matter if I don't have them? And we're going to buy a reflex specifically for Krushi. Like I said, we're going to find a full set of new equipment for Adol in. Adol, Adol, in. Uh, the upcoming dungeon, so there is just legitimately no point in buying anything new for him. Uh, he's going to just uh, get rid of all of it uh, eventually. Uh, I could supposedly, uh, I suppose I could buy a reflex for him and then pass it down to Krushi afterwards, but nah. May as well just equip Krushi with the reflex directly. Obviously, it's worthless to buy two of them because uh, they're the only party members who can equip heavy armor. And the boat is in the opposite uh, dock from where we were last time. We want to take this one right here. Man, already going on another sea cruise. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yeah, I imagine somebody who is, uh, in a... is locked into a desert doesn't do much sea travel. Yeah, yeah, Doogie, you keep making that joke. That we can do, though. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't matter too much to me, Shara, since she can't really see. Then again, I suppose she can feel the motion of the waves. Throws off her balance. Oh! That was remarkably forward thinking of him. Man, it is a tragedy that he was assassinated like that. I can't. It, it is. Terrible, though. He was the most sensible politician in Altago, and uh, man, it's just hard to believe that CS had any kind of personal malice towards him. He certainly put on a good show. <laughs> Despite the warnings here, there is not anything uh, prior to the altar that we really have to worry about once we hit Ruins Island. It is uh, smooth sailing until we get into the Sea Sanctum, where we are thrust into another fairly long and complicated dungeon. I, no I noticed that the uh, Wind Sanctum and the Sea Sanctum are considerably meatier than the Earth Sanctums and the Flame Sanctums. I'm saying the word Sanctums a lot, starting to lose meaning. Uh-huh. It's okay, Kurushi, you get used to it. <laughs> yeah, how long has it been in universe? As far as I'm concerned, the last time we've been here is like eh, about nine videos ago. Uh, just these dragons are just giving us so many questions. Actually, wow, hey, the dragon stones actually do something for us. And yes, this time around, you actually can teleport off of Ruins Island. All right. So yeah, that, that warning about uh, going, uh, it, it was an empty one. You can now easily uh, return to previous cities to resupply if you want to. Not that we really need to. Uh, just to give myself a little bit of insurance, I did buy some supplies uh, before uh, re-attempting the Mili Urdu fight. Didn't need any of them, but you know. And yes, uh, we can reactivate the stone monuments. Of course, we're just going to take the shortcut back to the altar. No reason to take a roundabout way to get there. All of the stuff here, very weak at this point. We could easily destroy it. Not like it, they're even good for leveling up skills, since you can just fire skills into emptiness and level them up. Incidentally, that's much more viable to do in Memories of Celsido, since uh, skill leveling is much faster in that game. Uh, skills cap out at level 3, and while the individual experience levels required to get them leveled up are a lot higher, obviously since they cap out so much earlier, it's much easier to actually get them all capped out on every character, which is fortunate because there's an achievement for that. Uh, but, uh... Reminiscing about the much more polished, polished sequel to this game aside, let's get into the Sea Sanctum here. As usual, we walk up to the altar, and we let our Elder or Elder Standin do their thing. Alright, 
uh, you should hit us with your melodic voice. Hey, we don't know if we don't try. <laughs> I can support that reasoning, guys. Well, we can't just do nothing. Speaking of uh, the Eldress of Iska, there is actually one more thing we could have done regarding Tia, but it's more prudent to just do it later. No reason to worry about it right now. All I'll say is that if you return to Tia's house after the scene where she reveals herself as the Eldress of Ix Iska, there is something waiting for you there. But we don't need it now, so let's just save it for later. Sorry, the word Anon has just been ruined for me by the inter internet. I can't, I can't take that sentence seriously. Oh well, you know, ancient incantations, they'll use ye old English, much like how the dragons speak in general. And here we are in the Sea Sanctum. As you can imagine, we're going to need quite a bit of the Grathalos Talisman because there is a lot of water to deal with here. But this Sanctum is not without its own unique things. But here we go, Sea Sanctum. This time we're going around with a balance party, so I don't have to worry about being shanghaied on any particular enemy we could run into. Well, it's the Sea Sanctum. Actually, yeah, I will admit that is a little pretty horizon there. <laughs> Buried at sea? Yeah, let's go. The penultimate Sanctum awaits us. Before we head in, let's uh, get some training rings on. I'll put the training ring 2 on Aisha, though honestly, it's been a while since Adol's gotten any floor time, uh, any serious floor time really, so let's bring him up to the front. It'll uh, work out anyway, because like I said, in addition to there being the expected equip equipment for Aisha, there is going to be equipment for Adol to use. Of course, as soon as we get in, we've got enemies that are uh, only vulnerable to pierce damage. Definitely don't go after these guys with uh, Kurushi. Surprisingly durable, actually. And I am kind of screwing up and using the wrong attacks here. Now we can get the Sea Stone, so we can equip or complete uh, another leg of the quest for that guy in Iska Village where he wants to see each of these stones. Let's just take a look at our map here. Mm -hmm. We're going to be thorough and try to get all the treasure. I'll admit, I don't know this uh, dungeon quite as well as the other ones. I didn't really practice this one too much. So we're probably going to get to about the halfway points. Hmm. What is that? That water looks a little solid. Well, that's because it is ice. And yes, we've got ice physics to deal with in this dungeon. Uh, it's going to be something that'll be a bit more of a hassle the deeper we get in there. I should let you know that I haven't really bothered buying weapons for characters that haven't been in the active party, so there are quite a few skills that we could have access to on characters like Krushi and Aisha that we just don't because I didn't really feel it was worth spending money on them. Most of them are not that particularly great. Uh, honestly, once uh, Krushi gets access to Dragon Blaze, that's all she really needs. That's easily the most useful skill. If you want something that's more cheap and spammable, uh, then... Uh, what was it? Uh, Ignis Blaze uh, is the much more practical skill for that. It's by far one of the fastest skills they ha uh, Kurushi and Mustafa have, and it deals uh, reasonable damage, so I feel that's the way to go with them. Uh, just alternate between those two skills. Uh, use Dragon Blaze if you have the SP already on deck to utilize it, or otherwise just spend some time uh, with a faster character getting the SP built up. Yeah. No sense in uh, fighting things that we've already got. Whoa, 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 whoa. No sense in fighting things we've already got uh, logged in the beast area. I need to be better about using my EX skills on things that uh, could just be killed instantly with them. Let's get more sea stones. Uh, I should note, at this point, we can synthesize bracelets with uh, the three different varieties of stones that we've gotten from the other sanctums, but that is actually fairly worthless because the stones that... the sea stones themselves they can be directly synthesized into a accessory. 
that is superior to the one that requires the three different varieties of uh, stones we've gotten up to this point, so yeah. Not really worth it to bother synthesizing those. Heading deeper into the dungeon here, we got a, another wood deposit. Of course, it's coral, but you know, for the purpose of gameplay, it is wood. We want to get as much fossilized twigs as possible. Looks like you can get withered hardwood as the rare material here. Now we get into a slightly more annoying section of the dungeon. As you can see, we've got these elevated ice paths here, and uh, we've got winds blowing against us, so we've got to be careful here. Some fossilized twigs, very nice. Now this, uh, actually coming up, is one of the scattered uses of the speed orb that I mentioned. Normally you have to uh, dodge along to avoid uh, falling off the paths here, but the speed orb can also let you go along without having to worry about getting knocked off. Uh, this is one of the few decent uses of the speed orb. Of course, when I screw up, uh, that just causes me to fall anyway. So yeah, we have to go along these ice paths and not fall off. You can use the dodge to correct yourself, and when you're going up against these hills, it is best to dodge along them to get up. Uh, it takes a while to build up the momentum to get past them just by running. Let's uh, get some more wood here. And more sea stones, I suppose. Actually, let's get the uh, alias urn on. No reason not to. Use a couple tumble arrows. It's been a while since I uh, really invested in that. If you want to stun things with Aisha, tumble arrow is definitely the way to go. It's one of the best stunning skills. And it's a really cheap one, too, so uh, bonus points in that regards. A lot of withered hardwood. Alright, let's continue along this way. You may have noticed that there was some treasure over there, so let's grab it. Get a Maum Extract, very nice. We'll definitely want to have that in stock for when we get to the boss. Sorry, uh... What? Something's stuck in my throat. And down this way, we can drop down, and let's see... Yeah, we just want to head back, so that was just kind of a shortcut to take this way again. Whoop, 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 yeah. Wind kind of throws me off a bit. Uh, not that you would have any reason to, but obviously don't have the wind cloak on when you're going across this platform, or you will be sad. And dodge along to get the momentum, and there we go. So, heading up this way... Uh, I forget uh, which way we want to go. Yeah, we want to go this way to get some treasure. Well, we want to get this way, go this way to get some ore. Yeah, come on, guys, work with me here. They just so dislike fighting for you. Fortunately, uh, the again talking about uh, quality of life improvements and memories of Celsida, the AI uh, got two settings called uh, I forget it's like aggressive or evasive tactic maneuvers, where you can set them to uh, fight things on their vol own volition, or you can set them to ignore things. Uh, honestly, if you want them to survive in boss fights, you kind of have to set them to ignore things on nightmare mode. But you know that's not critical. Uh, here we can get spiritual water as the rare drop, and there are going to be a lot more water deposits where we can get spiritual water in this dungeon, particularly towards the end. Uh, other ones will have stuff like tainted water and fragrant water. This is the first one we can get spiritual water off of. Uh, once we hit the end of this dungeon, we'll actually be able to farm spiritual water in greater quantities, and thus much more easily synthesize the uh, elixir compounds that require the spiritual water. So if you want to start pumping up your characters with uh, attack, uh, strength essences, and life essences, this is the point in the game where you can more feasibly do that. Here we get our first monument for the level, and we could go along this way uh, to the south, but uh, we would quickly come across an iced over staircase that you cannot get up no matter how hard you try. Here we get Fragrant Water. Not that you really need Fragrant Water at this point. Uh, spiritual Water is where it's at, and when we get to the, the next dungeon, Holy Water is going to be where it's at. Here we get a Dragon Energy Drop. Uh, let's just fire off some Tumble Arrows, use up the one we got, top off our SP, there we go. We're going to go a little bit deeper, but we'll probably be ending the video soon. Here we get into one of the more substantial sections of the Sea Sanctum. I don't know why I'm bothering to kill this guy. I, I guess his face just annoyed me. So we've got various uh, paths leading up and places we can drop down from, and of course submerged sections. We're going to want to equip the Grathios Talisman. Did I call it the Grathalos Talisman I earlier? I knew I was going to get that name wrong. I haven't had to think about it for a while, okay? That's kind of the uh, uh, thing about not doing this game marathon style is it's very easy to forget all the names that are in it. Uh, you try to walk against that current, you're just going to get blown back, don't even bother. Uh, the gimmick for this area is that we have a ton of these uh, plates to step on. Uh, doing so will either will lower the floodgates in various areas, 
draining the water in some areas, but blocking off paths in the other. However, once all the floodgates are dropped, we can get around the area in complete freedom regardless, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the other fringe benefit of dropping the floodgates is that these areas that are pushing us back, they will no longer be a factor. We can just get uh, by them, no problem. Let's see. We want to head this way first. Yeah. Eating a lot of hits trying to avoid everything. And I was completely wrong. We actually want to head this way. Yeah, Leia, I didn't record this. I didn't uh, prep a save file in advance this time around. So my memory is a little shaky on where everything is here. Here is a treasure for us. Ah, oh, man. I just love Aqua Burst. I, I really don't want to abuse that skill too much, but it's just so good. And it clears out Pierce Weak enemies so quickly. Uh, in regular combat, there's basically no reason not to use it. I'll try my best to avoid it being the dominant strategy in other fights. Uh, actually, uh, there is one thing I want to note here. Uh, we're supposed to drop a floodgate to actually raise water in this area, but there is an alternative way you can get that chest. Uh, if there was a certain skill we had, uh, Adol has a skill called Tornado Slash. That sort of functions as a bootleg jump button if you use it to that effect. Uh, it's kind of funny like that, really. But yeah, you can uh, sort of jump up platforms if you have Tornado Slash, which I'm sure I'll get an opportunity to demonstrate later. Raising the water here has uh, raised up uh, this uh, platform, allowing us to get into this chest now. So let's just, uh, did it raise the platform or did it, uh, yeah, I'm thinking too hard about it. Here we get an Albatross. This has uh, Aisha's Tier 4 skill. Let's uh, equip that over her Falcon Bow and get that on. This one is one of my less preferred ones in the game, honestly. Cataract Blue doesn't really compare to uh, her uh, Tier 3 skills, Waspinator, which we don't have at the moment, and Aquaburst. I feel that they're better, but I'll try and get a chance to show it off. Uh, let's uh, just beat on these guys with charge attacks. Thankfully, because of uh, Aisha's low SP cost, she only takes 72. Use this, and there we go. Fires a laser around her. I don't like it because it requires her to be standing a kind of particular distance from the enemy to get it to work, so it can make it a little finicky to use properly, but it's far from terrible. It does good damage, and of course, it uh, raises uh, the EX gauge as well as any other uh, Tier 4 skill does. Let me see. I know I'm forgetting something here. Uh, we're just going to have to explore around. I kind of lost my way here. I wasn't really paying attention. Let's see. That way is open up. I think we dropped a floodgate that lets us get over uh, this way, maybe? Or, no, we can drop down here. Okay. Now I'm remembering. And head over this way, and there should be another thing for us. Here we get uh, the Dalmatica, which is a upgraded cloth armor for Aisha, so let's get that equipped on her. Yeah, I, I, I can already tell I'm getting lost at this point. Let's see. So we dropped down there, we got the Dalmatica. I know there's one more floodgate switch we have to hit. We can't go that way. Going this way is going to hit us, a, cause us to hit a dead end with that waterfall. Is there anything this way that I missed? Yes, there was. Okay, there we go. Probably should have done more practice, but I've just been so busy recently <laughs> that it's been kind of hard to find extra time to uh, go through the dungeons of this game again and figure out where everything is. But we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Apologies if I'm kind of wandering around aimlessly, just thinking about dinner. Hungry. <laughs> and I guess my laundry, got that running at the moment. Here is the last switch we need to hit. This will close that floodgate, which will shut off that water current, which will allow us to move forward, and will also allow us to uh, go to the path that was blocked off because the floodgate was raised. So, got a couple things to check out after we drop that one. Heading over this way, we get the Ice Ring, which allows us to inflict Freeze, or 5,000 gold, if you prefer to sell it, which honestly, you should probably just sell it. <laughs> Heading over this way, we can finally get over that Floodgate, and we can get down to this section, find another treasure for us, and of course this guy is getting in my way. You know what? You annoyed me. We're just going to go for some Supreme Overkill here. There we go, 9,000 damage. He is quite dead at this point, and we get a useless treasure, but hey, for the sake of collecting everything, may as well get it. Heading over this way, we can finally move on to the next area after this rather lengthy not-quite-puzzle is taken care of, as soon as I can remember the correct way to go. I swear I've played this game, oh, like three times in preparation for this Let's Play? Well, actually, it was more like two, but, you know, I've played this game plenty of times. 
heading into this way, uh, we are getting into the next major section, and this is kind of an awkward spot to cut it, but I think this is where we'll end the video, because we will be getting something, uh, important afterwards. Let me just kill this guy so he isn't harassing me while I'm trying to end the video. Okay, with that guy taken care of, let's end the video here. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you next time, where we will finish the Sea Sanctum and fight another dragon. Of course we're gonna fight another dragon. You thought otherwise? Let's just save the game here. Alright, until next time, goodbye.